And what has sound got to do with water? Well, you know, going right back to when, when my work with cymatics began, which was right away back to 1996 in the Great Pyramid. Um, in those days, I was working entirely with, uh, with sand and other particulate matter to render sound visible. It didn't take me very long to discover that sand is actually not the ideal medium. It's obviously very two-dimensional. Um, you cannot get a great deal of detail out of sand-based uh, cymatic images. So I experimented with a, a range of other uh, mediums, and including uh, alcohol, which works actually quite well and you know, has the added benefit that you can just you know, <laughs> drink the results after the experiment. But anyway, I tried various uh, fluids and it turned out in the end that water, pure water, uh, and the purer the better, was actually the very best imprinting medium. So when I say imprinting medium, what I'm really uh, referring to here is that when sound impinges upon water, it's actually uh, making contact with water's membrane. It has a surface tension, of course, and that is a form of very, very sensitive membrane. So when we imprint sound onto water, what we get is a, a transcription of all of the periodicities, all of the vibrations within the sound suddenly become visible actually in the water. And what's really happened is we've transposed or transcribed or you know, converted, let's say, the vibrations in the sound into little wavelets on the surface and indeed the subsurface of the water. So now what we have is a model, if you like, of that sound made visible. And of course the benefit of that from a scientific viewpoint it's another powerful tool that we can use to explore the world around us. So sound basically underpins every single aspect of life and matter on this planet. You, in fact, you just can't have matter without sound. You know, sound is literally at the root of everything in, on this earth at any rate. And, um, and so by having an instrument like the cymoscope that can explore sound in a, an entirely new way, uh, and of course, you know that our uh, visual acuity is so powerful. It's a, it's a wonderful way to explore the world and the universe. And here we are able to see with our own eyes the result of sound as it imprints onto water. And water and in a nutshell. Sound together. Yes, that's a, in a nutshell, beautifully articulated, John. It just walks us right through. You know, we know this intuitively because every time we throw a rock in a pond, we see the waves. And we know that something about that wave action is where, you know, further dimensions and information is carried out. So uh, the relationship, so the relationship to from sound to water is also taking place within our cells, right? The, the amount of water inside our body, inside our cells. Can you speak a little bit about that or if I misstated it somehow, help me say it well. No, no, I mean, absolutely. We, our bodies are a very high percentage of water, of course, higher when we're uh, children, but as we grow older, even into old age, you know, our bodies are approximately 70% water. And when we talk about our blood, that's even higher. I mean, um, it's average sort of 90 to 92 percent of our blood plasma is, is water. Red so, water. <laughs> you know, and describing what I just described there about how sound imprints onto water. So now I mentioned, if you remember, not only on the surface of the water, but also on the subsurface. In other words, the sound is organizing the water molecules right throughout the depth of the water. And why that's important from a, a, a medical point of view and from you know, just the fact that we have sounds all around us that are impinging upon our bodies, those sounds are actually entering into the watery substance of our bodies and literally organizing the, uh, the molecules of the water into beautiful patterns or maybe not beautiful if we're surrounded by you know distorted or loud very ugly sounds then you can imagine what would be happening in our uh, visceral waters that are surrounding all of the organs and indeed even you know at the cellular level 
because every cell in our body contains a special kind of water called EZ water. If you followed the work of uh, Professor Pollack, you'll know that it's a very special kind of water, but nevertheless, it is water. And every cell has a membrane. And so just like I was talking there about the surface of water being a very super sensitive membrane, so too are the surface of our cells. So when sound uh, in the environment literally passes into our bodies, it's imprinting a pattern, literally a cymatic pattern is imprinted on the surface membrane of every cell in your body. And it's quite a thought, isn't it? You know, so it makes us, when we think about that, it makes us far more aware of the sounds around us and what they are, whether they're having a positive effect on us or perhaps in some instances, not so, so positive. You know, if there's a heavy truck goes by outside, what does that do to us? Well, it's a good question. You know, I can't answer it, but I, it's one of the um, puzzles that certainly I will be looking at in, the, in future years as to how uh, loud and distorted sounds uh, or affect, affect our physiology.